I'm feeling real blessed tonight. Boy, I'm blessed. What you mean? I got breath in my lungs, don't you see? Boy, I'm blessed. What you mean? I got breath in my lungs, don't you see? Boy, I'm blessed. What you mean? I got breath in my lungs, don't you see? Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to Christian Boyfriends. My name is Tumi WMJ and as usual, I'm sitting with the boys right here. This is episode, we don't even, we are not even counting anymore, ne? we're not really nah, counting anymore no, because no, you guys are subscribed, you are always watching the videos. So, for those of you guys who are seeing our faces for the first time, my name is Tumi as I said and I'm sitting with... Your boy, King of Cats. Prosca the Storm, your truly model, and your stylist. Hey, Amy Platinum, the white sauce. Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> That's because there's no age. <laughs> <never ate. laughs> so, so ladies, so I will ask ladies specifically for you. If you are a lady and you think that there is a suitable AKA mm. for this brother, please help us please. out because I wanna. Re I know that in life, in this one. Hey, please help us out there. And then I'm rep president of the Jesus Christ. <laughs> So thank you so much guys for joining us so you can do the right things, you man. Yeah, please make sure that you like, you comment, you subscribe, and you share with your loved ones. And don't forget to hit the notification button so that you can get our updates all the time. Ping! Alright, so I'm sure you guys can see the title of the video. Today I'm checking the guys' Bible knowledge. <laughs> so... We are checking Bible knowledge. If you know the answer, if we get the answers wrong, you tell us. I've got the questions here, by the way. I've put all of the questions here. I hope you guys won't be able to see them, but yeah, the questions are there. Ladies, it's very important that your gent knows the Bible because if he doesn't, how will he lead you? No, if no, how? How will he lead you? Like how? No, how? How is he going to? Hey, let me not preach. <laughs> so I've got 10 questions here and there is five of the gents here. So each guy is going to be asked two questions. So I'm, I was going to call out the question, but now, I don't know. Maybe I should call out the question or ask directly. Just call out. I'll, I'll, okay, so I'll say the question out and the guy who thinks that he knows the answer, you must call your name, then you will answer. So the first person to call out their name, then they will be the person who answers. Okay. Who went up Mountain Moria and what did they go up there for? Because. Uh, give us some enthusiasm, or else I'm not going to. Uh, yeah. Who's your chummy? Okay. I guess it's quiet. Okay. Come on, cat! Come on, cat! Come on! Let's go. Mount Moria. Wasn't it Abraham? What did he go to? To sacrifice. Okay, cool. Uh, one point to, uh, to a case there. Yes, okay. yes, All right, where did Jesus walk on water? Two points a case. All right, how many plagues did God send on each other? Hey, BTS! <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. Aye, said it first. You see, what was the question? How many plagues did God send on Egypt? Ten. <laughs> okay, so it's two points, I guess, one point A B. What did God say when Jesus was yeah. baptized? Right. No, you guys need to say it out loud because this yeah. is not working for me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> What did God say when Jesus was baptized? <laughs> okay, cool. That was my. Uh, this is my beloved son. He will be Alright, so it's one point I guess, one point. Uh, a, B, two point. No, no, it's two points I guess, one point. A, B, yeah. One, one, yeah. One, one, two. Okay, what did Jacob give Joseph that created animosity between Joseph and his siblings? Uh, I guess. Uh, yes. I guess. Okay. Yeah, coat of many colors. Hey, uh, yeah, these ones are quite simple. Okay. Oh, very, very simple. Oh, oh I, I need to hear what it is for this one. Hopefully, something's going to happen. God spoke to Moses through a. Oh, hey, 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 come. BTS. Hey, 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 h
Qualified there. Mm-hmm. Nicely, nicely, nicely. What did David use to defeat Goliath? Peters! You know my surname is Selina, twice Selina and a stone. Okay, they can't get it through. Okay. So he's on one. So, so Pastor BTS is on one, Abraham is on two, no, uh, Pastor BTS on one, Ref on one, AB on two, Akez on three. And off we have still don't had anything from 1G. What musical instrument did David play? Yes. Okay, let's give one because one didn't say anything. <laughs> Yeah. Or which other string went through? Yeah, I know it was the hub. So finally, one one did it. One BTS. Hallelujah. Uh two ref, two A B, three a case. So a case is a leading nicely. One. Yeah. What was Jesus' profession before he started his career? My case. I said it first though. Didn't you say it is? So that's four. That's four. I guess it's on four. Okay. Pasta. No, no pasta actually. After Jesus fed 5,000 people, how many baskets of food were left? BTS. I had BTS. How many baskets of food were left? <laughs> I guess. That's me. That's in doubt. Three. <laughs> okay, yes. I'll give it to Rev. No, Rev was before you. Yeah. Something like between it. <laughs> Five. Five. No. Akez. Okay, Akez is the last. Twelve. Sure. So Akez is on You're five. Flawless. No, Akez is going to win this game. I see, like, I'm, I'm smelling it. I can perceive it by the spirit. <laughs> there is a lady who washed Jesus' feet. Yeah, hey, with the... let, let the question finish before yeah. the AP. That's the ah, question. There's a lady who was Jesus feet. Who is she? AB. AB. Is a. 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 Yeah, well, sometimes, guys, <laughs> man, you need to have fun. <laughs> if you were not answering the question, <laughs> no, she, she broke the alabaster box. box. And what is <laughs> really much is which AB is correct. Uh, AB was correct. It's actually me. AB is correct. All right, so. <laughs> what is the shortest verse in the Bible? I can. Okay. Should I quote it? Yes, please. Jesus wept. That's from where? It's in John chapter 11. I'm trying to figure out this is verse. What is it? That's Lazarus' death. Verse 24. Mm-hmm. Somewhere there. Now we can give it to him because yeah. while well, he got everything right. So I guess it's on 6. I I'm going to ask four more questions, you know, to kind of give you guys an opportunity <laughs> to do something. <laughs> But you must be quick in calling your name. Mm. That's why where you guys are missing out because now I can't just do I can't. I'm quick in calling. <laughs> I can't. Before even the, the question finishes. Okay. Name two out of the nine fruits of the spirit. Is that my fruit as in I said name two out of all of them. Mm. So you've got an opportunity to call your That's name. Like Rev. No. Rev. Humility. Patience. Yeah. I said two. No humidity. No humidity. Fruits of spirit. 
No, the you will the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. Genesis chapter 5 verse 22. Pick one. Patience and long suffering. Yeah, patience yeah. and long suffering. We will give it to him even though he was just there <laughs> thinking about it for long. Okay. Um One what are the four gospels in the New Testament? Yes. Hey, 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 we need to get a tape. <laughs> okay, cool. That was the three more questions left. How many nights did Jesus fast? BTS. Forty. Thank you. Okay, cool. Hey. So you are on three. You are on three. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost there. I'm gonna go a bit, a little difficult now. What city mentioned in the book of Revelation is also an American city? Also an American city? What city mentioned in the book of Revelation is also the name of an American Yeah, Philadelphia. Yo, finally, some of these gents. Hey man. Come, bro. I didn't know that one. Yeah. 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 Is it? What are you doing when I was that man? Oh, because I'm, yeah, I'm, the one, the I'm the one fielding the things. Oh, the answers are there. Oh. Oh. What are you saying? You a <laughs> <laughs> so, there is. What is the name of. This is the last question? Or is this the last the question? Last mm-hmm. The last two. The last two, right? What is the name of the garden where Jesus went to pray after the last. Hey, 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 <laughs> I said wait, yo, no, 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 wait, 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 yes. it is a cash first. What's the question? Like? I'll answer it. What is the name of the garden where Jesus went to pray after the last supper? It's the garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> 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 it's the way he's saying it. <laughs> <laughs> it's you are the chicken. Oh, that like got short. <laughs> yeah, no, it is the garden of Gethsemane. Yeah, the last one difficult. Very hard. Like this. I don't, and it's not it's not quite hard. Mm. The last one is name the two first apostles to follow Jesus. Rep. Yeah. Yes. Peter, Peter not John. <laughs> you guys you guys got the first one right. The first name. Peter was Peter and Andrew. And Andrew. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's Peter and ladies and gentlemen, a cast wins the game! <laughs> Perfection is seven! Seven! Come on! In fact, as in the case, you'd have gotten all of them. He would have probably gotten all of but yeah, oh, he, he's, yeah, always, he's always that guy, man. But I'm before, giving you my three. <laughs> so that he gets ten. Yeah, so, doing a biblical thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a biblical thing. So before, before we close the, 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 the video today, let's talk a little bit about how important Bible knowledge is. Because you know, in the day we live in, People just think it's 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 okay for you to depend on what you are told at church and not really not really apply yourself to the word. So let's speak about quickly, like what is your take in terms of um, Bible knowledge and one studying the word of God for themselves. It's very important. Um, I mean, back in the day, if you study the history of the church, right? Even if you get the book of Matthias, you'll realize that there was a part where the Roman Catholic only had the Bible in Latin. And so basically, whatever the people were hearing in church was what was read in the book, assuming it was the Bible. So if you just heard Latin being spoken because you couldn't read or understand Latin, you just assumed whatever whatever's been said on the pulpit is absolutely correct. That's why people like Timothy Tyndale came along and said, no, this is wrong. We have to translate the Bible in a language that people can understand. Mm-hmm. And he was killed for it. People like Martin Luther King from Germany, same thing. He was killed for it because it... it the, at the time, the church became uh, uh, a structure of religion of control because they also became like a king. So the Pope was the king back in the day because of the powers he had. So he was above the government. I mean, if you study the Roman Catholic world, even uh, the Vatican itself, it's a separate country from the entirety of Italy. Yeah. Mm. They've got their own flag, own creed, and everything else. 
so it showed how back in the day they would do that so in this current state right it's important for you to know the bible especially now because it's yeah, easy for people now. especially now because it's easy for you to be deceived and you're told this yeah. and that and that's one thing i like about pastor chris he encourages you to have your bible present during service and to study the Bible. That's why in the rest of the reality is when you study the beginning of the year, Shabbat Bible study that and read it. Yeah. Oh. It, it empowers you with the knowledge to know your, of your inheritance in Christ. Sure. The weapons that you need for your warfare that are in the Bible. When you understand the logos of God, it's easy for you when you're praying to release the realm of God. If you don't have the logos in you, there is no weapon for you to fight with because the, the Bible is, the word of God, right, is a two-edged sword. If you don't have it, mm in your mouth yeah. there is no way you want to fight and the only way you can have it is like we say in you read in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this yeah. book of the lord shall not depart out of my heart but you shall meditate no, therein yeah. day and night mm-hmm. so and also you read that's where your success is in the same chapter yeah. in, in psalm chapter 1 the psalmist says the same thing that when you meditate on these things you'll be fruitful in and out of season and whatever yeah. you do prospers so as a child of god it's important for you to know bible let me show you another one before i run no before right. you no no before yeah. you go there's five of us yeah here. And uh, for me, the Bible is the manual of life. That's your manual for life. That's what directs you. So it's important to make sure that you take in not the Bible. So you take in the logos, and it becomes rema to you. Yeah. Live by the word. You take in by the word. Like I like the scripture said, we chew on scriptures. That's why we do. Have you seen a person when they are thinking about something and they are chewing that gum? That's why you need to do with the word because mm-hmm. you need to make it personal to you. It's not enough to just hear it at church or when it's preached, but you make it personal to you. Sure. To understand it. Uh, I remember for me, like to round up, how I got. Because when I just got born again, I was like reading a Bible, this thing is huge. And guess what? Because I liked movies. I was watching Bible movies. That's how I got the interest now. Because after watching, because you know, they don't do them that perfect. Mm. So after watching that movie, I was always interested to say, let me go to my Bible. And that's how I was going. And another thing, mm, that's like, a good just strategy. to give a, a, a hint, like you can start Bible characters by that. It also helps you now to start scriptures by scriptures. And it, it helped me. And I enjoy, I know I've finished it's more than four to five times reading the Bible, you know. And just to add as well, um, we, had a, we had a meeting with one of God and he was teaching us on, on the Word, the Word of God. So he was, um, he was asking us why is it important to know the Scriptures or to quote the Scriptures. Mm-hmm. And he said the, the most important reason of, why, of us knowing the Scriptures is because Jesus himself quoted the Scriptures. And he was talking about how everything changes around you. Yeah. Things change, whatever change, but the word remains the same. Sure. Yeah. And then he said, everything that is outside of the word can be changed by the word. So everything that is not in the word can be influ- can be changed by the word, it can be influenced by the word. Mm-hmm. So everything. So in whatever thing that you may be going through, there's one thing that you can always know and depend on is the word of God because it remains forever. That's why even Jesus himself, who was the word of God, mm-hmm. had to go back and refer to the very scriptures yeah. because you cannot separate a man from his words. True. Understand? Yeah. So we go back to the same thing where we say, "You are, you are what you say." Mm. So the man proved it himself when he went back to the scriptures and said, "The Bible says." He was reading it. He was reading it that the, 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 the that time it was called what? Scrolls. The scrolls. scrolls. Yes. Yeah. He was taking the scrolls and the scrolls. Was, you know, referring to mm. the scriptures. So go back. Your life. Everything about your life is actually written in the. It's written. Your whole life is written. Your manual, how you work, how you receive, how you work. Yeah. It's already there. The only thing left is for you to go for the scriptures and 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 go find out who you are. Go find out what you have. Go find out what you can do. Mm. It's all in the scriptures. So for for me, sorry. Mm. Um, there's no place on earth where you can find God except in His Word. Sure. Yeah. Because the Bible says in the beginning from his word. Mm. was the word, sure. and the word was with God, and the word was, was God. God. Mm. So if you want to know God, you want to know what does he love, how he thinks, what does he prioritize, you'd have to refer to the word of God. Not your feelings, not yeah. what you think, not what people say. Your relationship with him will also be dependent on the word, not how you feel, not uh, Decide. The circumstances and not yeah. what people say, it will always be his word because him and his word are one. Mm-hmm. So one, it is a place where you get to know God. But in knowing God, you get to know you. Because Yourself. the Bible says that we are born of the word. When you become a new creature, you are born of God's word. Mm-hmm. So in looking at the word of God, you are looking at yourself. You are seeing who you are. 
Now you no longer depend on what people say, you no longer depend on your feelings, you no longer depend on what you're seeing. But everything from that day on, it's dependent on what you see in the Bible. What the scripture says about me is my reality. Ooh, and you are getting to you acting according to that is you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So and even even exactly even becoming that image, it is dependent on you looking at it. The Bible I mean, talks about you know yeah. looking into the law of liberty, liberty. Yes, looking sir. at it. Keep looking at it. That thing, it changes your consciousness because you need to remember before you got born again, you had your life experiences. You had so many things that have uh, brought a perception and mindset in your life. And those things regulate your actions. They regulate how you talk. Yeah. They regulate everything yeah. around you. Man, man's uh, 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 life is dependent on the information that he has. Yes. Whatever information is in his system, in his mind, hmm. is how his life is going to turn around. Sure. So what God wants is for man to have the word, because hmm. when he has the word, he will produce you what the to, word yeah. talks you about. Be, so yeah. the more that you are studying Ooh, those God's preaching, word, brother. the more that you are listening to God's mm. word, the Bible says you are renewing your mind. Oh, you are taking out the mm. bad things, Martins. the wrong perceptions, yeah. and you are putting in what God wants you to have yeah. so that you can become it. That's why I tell a lot of people that have challenges, they say, yo, man, I'm trying to change my life first before I can become a Christian. I say you are very false. Mm. You cannot change yourself. Mm. You mm. cannot mm. make mm. yourself. Mm. You cannot change yourself. And God does not expect you to change yourself to come to him. No, he expects you to have his word because when you have his word, the word will change you. That's what it does. And it, you know, one of the other things that I've really experienced with the word is the active energy that it has. Yeah. There's a scripture that that I grew up with, and this morning when 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 it was read in church, I felt like screaming and shouting because it said the word of God is active. Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. It's sharp and it is I like that part also that said it's quick. Yeah. It's quick. And and I remember how in, in that moment the spirit was already saying to me that you can't delay. There are some things that you can't delay. Because but but you see what, what what's happening is that this is what the scripture says, but now he's talking to me about other things in my life to say there are things that you can't delay. You need to respond, and particularly he was in in that because because of what we're doing here. He particularly was talking to me about um, partnership and me giving because this has been something that's been a desire for me to say this is what I want to do. And he said, no, if you if that money hits your account, you can't you can't wait because the more you the more you wait, the more you're gonna see. But this, this, this. Yeah, when that money hits, yeah, it's yeah. time for you to do and act immediately. Be quick because there's power in that response. There's power in in you responding. There's there's potent energy that pastors taught us about uh, sound matter and faith and how these words, you speaking the words, which is one of the things that um, I've personally been practicing of late. Of when you are reading your rhapsody, even when you are reading scriptures, speak them out so that yeah. even the yeah. things around you can start mm-hmm. noticing that this yeah, is what yeah, is happening. True. And um, I think one of the best things that one anybody can do for themselves is to relate with the Word of God and read a version they can understand. Yes. So don't. I know in most churches the King James version is what is read, and if you really want to be poetic and whatever, you can read the King James version. But get a version that you understand that yeah. is that breaks it down to you because sometimes people feel it's far removed, and the reason why they feel it's far removed is because they they are reading it in thine and thou and. So if you are reading it in, in pure English, even in Sotswana sometimes, I sit and I'm like, yeah, no, now this is entering because you are understanding exactly what they are talking about. You see, I, you see how God was a strategist, master strategist. He was doing everything intentionally with an intent. That does something to you and that's exactly what you were saying. But it removes, it removes you thinking, oh, we can just live life nonchalant. You also ad- ad- adopt this behavior of being a strategist in your life and strategizing by the spirit, not just saying, oh no, this is how we are doing things. But you are being practical with it. I'm very practical in my outlook. And all the time when I'm looking at the Bible, I'm saying, like, people, these people live normal lives. The things that we are, we are going through now are not, they're not new. Some of the things that I'm personally going through in my life are not new. Some of the people in the Bible went through them where yeah. you were going through something yeah. and you look at their response yeah. and now you think, am I going to respond the same way? Yeah. 
if I respond the same way, will God? But also, he deals with us individually, right? But he might not respond this way. No, no man leaves their house really hard without checking the mirror, and that's why you should be with the sure. word of God. That's yeah. your mirror. You always have to check it. Yeah. And the Bible says, "Take words with all kinds." Take with you words. Take <laughs> with you words. Like always, you have this thing in you, and this is why you have the gathering clouds. How are you feeling those clouds? Yeah. Take words with you. Sure. Take and the word. One, so one of the ones what would uh, do me say. Like studying the word should be, um, you know, like how, it, how people like to say Christianity is a lifestyle. But sure. You know that it's a life. Like reading the word, fellowshipping with the word should be a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like every time you yeah. read the word, it's not you getting into a situation and when you think, you first think, okay, in this way, how would it be? And then in this way, you just have one way, which is the word. Sure. That is That should be your dream. It becomes, so, yeah. Like, Mm. That's, that becomes your personality, you renewing your mind through the word. So you must see yourself in the word. I, I like what he said because there's a, uh, one of our brothers, he was telling me he was coming out of his shop and one of our leaders from church was, <clears throat> was just outside the shop. He, he, he was speaking in tongues. He didn't care who was looking because he had so imbibed the prayer that he doesn't care who's around. Mm-hmm. This is between me and God. Mm-hmm. Whether you're looking or not, it's none of my business. Yeah. The issue is now i can't try to drive yeah. to my house first mm. it's too far i'm here now i'm dealing i'm dealing with this thing right now on the spot mm. that for me was very encouraging because it's almost a taboo for you try to for you to try to act out your yeah, christianity yeah, yeah, yeah. in the word of god yeah, sure. like on, what bro. are you doing it's not cool mm. but when you look at the life of jesus what's cooler than walking on water i'm sure. just like come on bro look. but when the sick you see what pastor bt has mm. said <sighs> You need to take that logos in mm. so that it can create the rhema for you. Because mm. that rhema is the it's the one that changes mm. everything. So if you are not if you're not taking it in, mm. it will never come out as a rhema. So you are you, that's why it's a void. And sometimes it's a void people don't recognize. You're not recognizing that this is a void. This is your biggest challenge. You're just thinking, oh no, my biggest challenge is this, is just that I can so I wanna You know, I'll have somebody who will take care of me. No, the no. biggest <laughs> void is the word. The word. That's yeah. the biggest void. And, and you know, we we're actually having a discussion. I remember we had a discussion with AKS. We we're talking about the Word of God and how Christianity essentially is. We're, talk- we're, we're discussing about faith. Oh, yeah, yeah. That the Word of God has to be a final say in your life. Sure. Yeah. Because you have to be crazy. In, in some people's mind, you have to be crazy because you, the Word of God has to be what you believe in. Most of the time, we are quick to say, I believe, I believe, but do you really believe? Yeah. You have to go the extra mile to say, it's not in between. I believe. In God and I believe in His Word, and you make His Word the final word in your life. Mm. Where you, where, you, where you, because, like Pastor Chris said one day, he said, you can look at something and you see that it's blue, and God comes and says it's black. Are you gonna depend on your eyes and what you're thinking? You know, you're seeing or what God is saying. His word is true. Yeah. Mm. No matter what. That's why most of the time we tell somebody, somebody comes and says, "Like, see," and we say, "No, you are perfect." Yeah. We are not looking at what you are feeling or we are look, not looking at your facial expressions. Beyond. We are looking beyond. We are looking at the word of God and what he has declared. Mm. His word stands forever and that's what it is. So when it comes to the word of God, yeah. don't look at yourself and the situation. Look at what the word... Make yeah, your sense. Believe. Believe. I, I was saying to him that all these miracles that Jesus was doing, to him it was not a miracle. It was a life. It was a life. It was, a it was, a it was just him. One of, one of the things I actually wanted to say, sorry to interject, is uh, when you look at the, the story of Abraham in the Bible, how he ended up getting a son, Abraham was not impotent. Mm. The challenge was with Sarah. Sure. Mm. All the time. The challenge mm. was with Sarah. Sarah was the one that could not have the baby. Mm-hmm. But look at what God does. God does not go to Sarah. God comes to Abraham, mm. and what does God give Abraham? His word. Sure. He keeps telling him, uh, uh, your seed will be great. Mm. That was his word. That was God's word. Mm. For 30 years, God keeps coming sure. to this man and telling him, no life. Uh, you are going to be the father of many nations. Mm. He even says, change your name. Is it that God is not powerful enough to heal Sarah? Mm. I mean, he's God. He could just look at Sarah and Sarah could be healed. Mm. But that's not his solution. His solution is to give Abraham the word. The word. Oh. And that's also something when you look at the family unit, mm. why you were saying the man must have the word of God. Mm. Because 
if the man has the word of God, he's able to direct the family. The family. Mm. You see, God came to the man. He gave the man the word. But I was saying this to say, God's word is so important that even when he brings solutions to you, he would bring it through his word. Sure. He gives Abraham the word. And look at what that word did for Abraham. Abraham ended up becoming the father of many nations okay. by what? By believing. The Bible says he believed that word. When he believed that word, Sarah's womb changed. Sure. Yeah. The solution that he was looking for happened to Sarah by him believing in God's word. So God's word is so, so important. It's important to him himself. It's important to God himself. And because it's important to God, it should also be important to us. One of the things, uh, the last thing I also wanted to say is the only document in this world that contains accurate truth today is the word of god there's nowhere else where you can find accurate history and accurate future mm. because that's where the bible you go to revelation mm. he's we talking about accurate the prophecies you go to the old testament he's talking about history accurate history mm. and accurate future there's so many lies and deceptions happening in our world sure. and the only place where you can bet your life to find the truth is in the word of, the god. Word of god and if you don't know that truth obviously they'll Talk deal with you by following the doctrine with what ref is saying uh, that we wish it's true that outside of the word there is no other truth mm. is but i feel like sometimes uh, when people study the word they just go at it like you just open the Bible and say, okay, that's like yesterday in Greenable chapter six, yeah. chapter seven. Yeah. <laughs> just start reading, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like they don't they don't condition the spirit to let the Holy Spirit give them guide them. Yeah. Guide that guidance to, mm. to, to, to read the scriptures and get the revelation that is being communicated through the scriptures. Because someone else might come and read and say, How oh, but it turned water into wine. May this pause. But that was mm. not mm. what was communicated. What was being it was about multiplication. You know, I'm saying. Sure. You know, I I I love, I love what you said when you said um, that uh, people don't. Uh, you say people just go in there, and nothing really happens to them, and that's not. How can I put it now? Um, H, there was a time where I was I was just sitting, and the Holy Ghost said to me, "I want you to focus on all the wars in the Bible." Right. Interesting enough, when I studied the Bible. That's exactly what it is about, the compilation. Every single person who went to war against God lost. Mm. All the way through Jesus Christ, death itself lost. So God has told me that you can't lose. Your lineage is, is filled with too many people who've won, who were with me. Sure. Anytime they went against me, they lost. So it simply means, as a Christian, there is no battle you lose. There's no war you lose. Because... The camp and stock you come from has only and when you look at the when you look at the family lineage, everybody there just won. Just wins. So I was so if, if you're right, if people just read it like they're reading a book it's mathematics or newspaper, you won't, won't get won't to see that. Power. It won't it won't carry across. It will just seem like, oh, this is a nice story. But if you really focus in on it, sure. You look at the old testament, you look at the life of Jesus, you start realizing that. I can't lose because my DNA is really just built different. And in this case, it, it is also according to Christianity, Christians in fact, to say that you just want to have the fact that I read the Bible today. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> yeah, you to just, make yeah, yourself feel yeah, good. If you, ask me, if you ask me, I read the Bible today. Yeah. But now you're losing the whole thing. Yes. Yes. So you say, why do we really read the Bible? Can I, can I just give something? There's something. Very, there's a simple prayer that I, I, I think I saw it in the Rhapsody that I used to pray. Even now, I still pray. Plus God minus devil. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I would pray it whenever I would study the Bible. I would say, Father, open the eyes of my understanding that I may understand you. It, it did so much. You'd be so shocked that yeah. um, I'll be like, I, I used to read this, but now I could. I, I was able to hear the to Holy hear, Spirit exactly. You hear speaking you hear. And, and and talking because the 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 Word of God encourages us to meditate on the Word. Mm -hmm. And you know, the man of God taught about the three levels of meditation, where you what what you are reading, you are also visualizing it. Mm -hmm. Then you are speaking it under your breath. Then it gets to a level where you get to roll out that word. But 
it's 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 not it's not something that you do passively. Studying God's word is 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 not something we should do passively. So I I would encourage someone if maybe you're having a trouble studying God's word, just pray and say, Father, open the eyes of my understanding that I can understand your word. You'll see by the time you study the word, there'll be revelations yeah. because yes, no. that is the best time for God to talk to you. Yeah. Sure. When you are studying God's word, God's that's right. the time He will he talks to you. Because God talks to you. Those are His words. Mm. Exactly. Those are His thoughts about you. Exactly. Those are His thoughts. You know, everything, it's just encapsulated. Exactly. Like, so, like Pastor Chris described mm. what the word is. It says it's His perceptions, it's, it's His ideals, it's His will. Mm. Yes. Flows mm. in vocabulary. Mm. So, you're basically, like Rafa said, you're looking at God. Sure. Yeah. Talking mm. to you. Talk to you. Talking to you. And that's how we wrap up today's video, um, guys. Thank you so much for, for, for staying to the end of this video. So if you are somebody who wants to start um, listening or, or even reading, start reading your Bible. If you're somebody who is out there who has been having challenges with studying your Bible, who's uh, looking into the Word of God and really taking our time and giving it time, start there. Um, start with your prayer. Put, put your mind in the right place. Focus your mind. The Bible says, set your gaze on Jesus because he's the author and finisher of our faith. And read that word. You know, um, Use the Rhapsody of Realities, a daily devotional yes. Bible. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the Bible, the Rhapsody of Realities Bible as well. There are many also Bibles that are available that sh schedule the scripture reading in in, in in days, you know, you read a gospel a day, you read a psalm a day, you read a, a, a proverb a day, different ways that you can really look at doing this, you know, pray, pray about it, um, pray about your intention, um, schedule it in your time as well. There's something AP said that you, you get to a point where you're not just doing it religiously, but you are scheduling it, you know, you know that this is your time with the word of God, your time where you are at your ultimate peak, yep. you're, not, you're not scheduling it for the time where you know that you're about to fall asleep, <laughs> you know, you're scheduling it where you know that you are at your, you are active, you're at your ultimate peak, yeah. you will be able to give it attention, and if God tells you to do something, sometimes he tells us to do something immediately, you know, you are able to action it out, so it, if it's, whether it's early the morning or sometime during the afternoon make sure that you do that do that thing so that it helps you it benefits you you'll see how your life changes you'll see how things different things start aligning in your life because you give it attention thank you so much for watching the video today we really really love you we appreciate it take the link share it with your friends with your family anybody yes. you think is going to benefit from listening to this uh, information and until the next time we see you we love you man bye, bye. bye. go ye therefore and preach Thank you so much.